Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to tackle a tough topic. It's an easy topic but a tough topic at the same time and that is how to get started with Photoshop CS6 if you're a beginner. Because the reason this is tough is because we could spend 15 minutes, an hour, two hours on any one topic and it would still be beginner. And there's no way to cover everything for a beginner in one video or one setting. So what I decided to do was take the approach of what are the 10 things that people asked the most how to do and take those 10 things one by one and just knock them out in this video. So that way you'll have a foundation of how to use Photoshop if you're just starting out. Also, uh, there are some rules involved. You know, there, if you're an expert Photoshop user, then this video is probably not for you because you've already mastered these things. Secondly, if you have a way of doing something that I didn't do it that way, that's okay because Photoshop has an infinite number of possibilities and therefore several ways to do the same thing. So if you found a better way to do something or a way that's more comfortable for you, by all means do it that way because I won't be able to cover every way I know to do something in this short amount of time. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. I have a, um, the first thing we're going to do is we have a folder that actually has the images in it that I want to work on. Now you may be getting your images off your digital camera, you may be getting them off a scanner, you may be getting them off um, the web if you've downloaded royalty free images or stock photography. And even that we could spend you know 15 minutes talking about all the ways to get your images into your computer. But we're just going to assume at this point you have some photos on your computer and you want to start working on them. So the first product we're going to work with is one that actually comes with Photoshop. It's called Adobe Bridge. So I'm just going to take this folder, drag it onto the bridge icon and have Bridge open up that folder of images. Now these are the images we're going to work on for the next few minutes to cover as many of these topics as we can, hopefully all 10. So let's go ahead and jump on topic number one. I'm going to go ahead and open up this photo. And the first thing that people usually want to know how to do is they want to know every single tool and what it does. And I'm not going to cover that. What I'm going to do instead is do it by task. So in this case, we're going to go in and say that, you know, you have a task and you want to remove blemishes. That's the one we're going to start with. Now, there are several ways to do this, but the way that I like to remove blemishes the most is using the spot healing brush. That's the spot healing brush on your tool panel. And when you bring it over, you will normally have a circle. That's your brush. Now, by the way, I'm working with a Wacom tablet. I'm working with an Intuos 5. And while you can do what we're going to do with a mouse or a trackball or trackpad, I highly recommend a tablet for Photoshop work. It's just going to make your life easier and you're going to benefit from it every, every time you use Photoshop. And even their lowest price $50 tablet is better than your most expensive mouse you can buy. So get a tablet. Now the next thing is when you bring this tool over to Photoshop and you're just opening Photoshop for the first time, you're going to be on what's called the background and we're going to work on layers in just a moment. But you're going to be on the background and so therefore any changes you make, you're making them to the actual image. Now the circle that you get will either be a circle or it will be like a, a set of crosshairs like that. That's because I have the caps locked down. So if you don't have the circle, make sure your caps lock is off so you can get the circle. Now the circle itself can be, it's your brush size. It can be hard, it can be soft. I normally like to work with a very soft brush. So we can go ahead and soften this up so that we have a nice soft brush to work with. And all I did was just click on this to get to the brush size, which can make it smaller or larger and softer or harder. So I like a soft brush to work with. Now you can also, I said I would show you keyboard shortcuts. You can also make your brush bigger and smaller if you have bracket keys on your keyboard. So on the US keyboards, that would be next to the letter P. The open bracket makes it smaller, close bracket makes it larger. So now that I've got this, I'm just gonna go ahead and what blemishes do I wanna get rid of? I wanna get rid of the pimples and things that you probably wouldn't notice when you saw the person. And also the things that wouldn't be there maybe in a week if it's a pimple especially. Now I am gonna leave things like freckles because that's her face. That's the way her face normally looks and she probably likes her freckles. So when you're deciding what to get rid of, you're typically getting rid of the things 
that are temporary on the person, like a bruise or a scar that you know will ultimately heal, but didn't heal before you took the photo. Or things that you know you don't notice when you're looking at the person in person. Now, as you can see, I'm either clicking or painting with this tool to remove these things. And I just personally don't like necklines, so I'm just removing those even though everyone has them. Okay, so this is the way this tool works. And again, you will decide between you and your client or just you what to get rid of. But this is one quick way to get rid of blemishes. Just using the spot healing brush, it's my favorite way to do it because it doesn't require you to do anything extra. You don't have to sample anything. You don't have to guess. You just start painting with this tool and it uses the surrounding pixels to make the adjustment. So it used all the skin around that, uh, that um, particular blemish to start to get rid of the blemish. Okay, so that's number one, uh, how to remove blemishes. Number two, um, and by the way, it's not just blemishes. Maybe you want to get rid of some stray hairs here, which I do want to get rid of. Number two is filters. And filters can be done or used for an artistic effect, or they can be used as a utility. So if I go under my filter menu, I have a filter, for example, called oil paint. And when I bring up oil paint, it will give you sliders over here on the right, so you can adjust how the paint looks. And what this is doing or simulating is what my image would look like if it were hand painted. And that's again, that's for effect. Now, if I click OK, that will do that effect on the actual image, on the background, and if I save and close, I have now permanently changed this photo. So we're gonna see ways to not permanently change your photo, but for now, I'm just gonna undo. The other filter that I'm actually going to use is called Liquify. Now, Liquify is for pushing pixels around in your image. So for example, I don't like that little dip in her hair. It's natural, it's where the hair is parted, but I'm just gonna push it up a little bit so that it's a little bit smoother going around there. And again, you will make your brush size as big as you need it to be or as small as you need it to be for the thing you're trying to push or pull. So again, we can just pull this out and push in where we need to, pull out where we don't want to push in, and you can kind of round things out, smooth things out, move things around, you can go crazy with it and do things like that, but please don't. You will do unless you're trying to make some kind of weird alien effect. But that's what it's for. It's literally for pushing pixels around. Now, there are other tools here. Brush size, stylus pressure, all of these things can be applied, especially if you're working with a tablet. Um, but that's kind of the effect that we're looking for. So we'll click OK, and that will basically take it from that, which is undo, to that, which just kind of pushes it out a little bit. Now, I went a little crazy over here on the right-hand side. And so if I undo it, it's gonna undo everything, but I'm gonna introduce you to your history brush. What the history brush will allow me to do is paint in undos. So I can paint back the hair before I did it in this one spot where I didn't like the way it worked. Or if I undo that, and I just wanna undo this one little glitch here, I can do that. So history brush is like your undo on a brush. All right, so now that's blemishes and filters. Now let's talk about layers. So I'm going to go into a different photo here. We're done with this one. We can go ahead and close it. And by the way, you have bridge, which we originally went to to get the photos, but you also have a panel called mini bridge. In mini bridge, you can navigate to the same folder you were just in and grab the images right in Photoshop without having to leave Photoshop. So let's go ahead and double click on this one. And we can put mini bridge away. And now I need to make this image larger. You have a magnifying tool. Let's go ahead and just zoom in on it so I can work on it better. And on this particular um, image, I want to talk about layers and the two types of layers we're gonna work with as a beginner. Now layers, if you think of layers, think of them as your original images on the bottom and you're putting clear pieces of acetate on top. And whatever you do on the acetate, of course, is not affecting, you're protecting what's underneath. So that's the way these layers work in Photoshop. So if I add a new layer by clicking the new layer icon, layer number one, 
and it would be layer number two after that. Whatever layer selected, that's the layer I'm working on, and therefore it is not affecting anything underneath that layer. So for example, if I were to just grab the paintbrush and start painting with red paint and ruining the photo, oh no, you painted over him. Well, technically you've painted on that layer. If you turn that layer off or hide it, you see that he is unaffected by that because you're working on that clear piece of acetate, which is called a layer, and not affecting the background underneath. So that also means if you grab a tool like the eraser and you start erasing on that layer, notice I'm not erasing the photo, I'm just erasing what I did on that layer because that layer is just that layer. So the red only exists there. And I can throw that layer away if I don't want it anymore and get right back to the background. Now, the next kind of layer we're gonna talk about is we're going to make an adjustment and we're gonna use an adjustment layer. So you can make adjustments to your photo that are destructive, meaning that you're, they're permanent. So for example, if I want to lighten this photo up, I can go to my image menu, I can come down to adjust, I can go to exposure, and I can lighten the photo by dragging a exposure slider. And that gives me what I want. I wanted his face to be a little bit lighter, but it's also blowing out everything else. And if I click OK and close and save this photo, I've now made that change permanent. So we're going to do two things. We're going to work with a new kind of layer called an adjustment layer. And we have the same kinds of adjustments here. So there's exposure. When I click exposure under adjustments, I'm adding it now as a layer, but I'm also adding it with a mask. Now, if I make that same adjustment, make his face brighter, but I don't want everything else to be brighter, then what I can do is mask that effect above this layer. Now, I can start painting on that mask to hide, let's grab the paintbrush, to hide that effect just by painting in black, but that will take too long. So let's undo it. And let's do the opposite. Let's hide the effect and use the mask to hide the whole thing and only paint in the areas we want to bring back. So we'll, we're on the mask. We have it selected with a little box around it. And now we'll just go to our image menu and we'll come down to um, image adjust invert or command I, control I on Windows. So now that hides the entire effect on the entire layer. And notice that hiding is black, showing is white. So when it's, in, when it's all black, that means you've hidden the entire effect. So now if we switch to white paint, just by clicking the little double arrow here, and if it's not on black and white, you hit the letter D to go back to your default colors, or just click here to go back to your default colors. And now that we're on white, when we paint just on his face, we are now bringing in that effect and by the way, we can use a brush and we can use a nice soft brush to soften the effect. There we go. We're now bringing that effect in only in the area where we want it. But more importantly, because that is a layer, it has opacity. That means we can turn it down. It's a little too bright. Or we can leave it at 100% and just adjust the layer itself. Make it darker, make it brighter. So we can do it either way, but we're, we punched a hole in the mask so therefore that effect is only showing through that hole that we just made. And now we can adjust accordingly. So that's making a photo lighter or darker using exposure, which was number four. Number five was selective adjustments, making an adjustment in a photo um, selectively by using a mask on a layer. All right, so now let's go ahead and we'll close Donnie here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove an object from a photo. That's one that I get asked all the time. So let's go to this one. Now, these photos I got came from iStock Photo. So some of these are shot myself, like the one of Donnie we just closed. But some of these are iStock, and they will say iStock up here if they are. And that number, if you were to search for this number, you'd actually find that photo, and you'd be able to do exactly what I'm doing so you can work along with me. Um, and but the fact that it's an iStock photo, you know that you can download it and therefore there are no tricks behind, behind this. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that. So let's go ahead and now we want to do two things. First, 
we want to remove the kid from the photo. We just want the mom. So the way we would do that is we have to make a selection and there are all kinds of selection tools in Photoshop. There are your um, marquee tools, there's your lasso tools, there's your quick selected magic wand. You have the pin tool down here somewhere, there it is. So you have all these tools to make selections and of course you will become comfortable with whichever tools work best for you. I'm gonna cheat and start with the easy one, the one that is called quick select. So when you see an arrow to the bottom right of a tool, that means that that tool has more than one tool underneath it. So you may be on magic wand and you're saying, where's quick select? You just hold down magic wand, go to quick select and you can switch. Now quick select is as the name implies, it allows me to make a quick selection. So I can go through and select him, but I'm also gonna to need to remove his shadow too so that we would never know he was there. And just like that, quick selection identifies the pixels that are similar and makes a selection. But in order for me to do this effectively, I need to bring that selection out all the way around him a little more. So we're gonna use a technique called select, modify, expand. And I'm gonna expand it by, and you know, you'll have to guess at your number because it depends on the resolution of your photo. But for this one, I'm gonna use 10. And that just move the pixels or move the selection out by 10 pixels all the way around. Now we're going to use some Photoshop magic that was introduced in CS5 and of course is in CS6 called Content Aware Fill. Now you can bring up Content Aware Fill as long as you're on the background, you're not on a layer, by just hitting your delete key on the keyboard. That will bring up your fill dialog box. And the first time I recorded a video showing Content Aware Fill, I must add a million comments that said, whenever I hit delete, it doesn't work. Or when I do, I don't have a delete key on my keyboard because I'm in a different country or I'm on a PC or I'm this or that. So here, let's, let's just cancel. If for whatever reason, delete doesn't bring that up for you, go to edit fill. It's the same thing. So delete just as the shortcut to bring that up. So now that we're on fill and make sure you're not on one of these other options, you're on content aware, we click okay. And Photoshop will use the surrounding pixels to fill that in. And that's the beauty of it. Now, did it do it perfectly? No, I can see some little spots around here or highlights of the head because I know he was there. So now you can use your other methods that we just talked about to simply get rid of those. And now they're gone. And now that one's gone. And now he's gone. So there it is, kids gone out of the photo, removing an object out of the photo with content aware of fill. So I'm gonna undo, 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 and bring it back, and I did my undos from the keyboard. Uh, step backwards on the Mac is Command Option Z. On PC, that would be Control Alt Z to step back one step at a time because it has multiple undos. The next thing we're gonna do is in CS6, we have a new tool underneath your spot healing brush called Content Aware Move. So I want to now move the kid closer to his mom. Oh, okay, so here we go. We make sure the mode's on move. We make sure the adaptation starts off on medium. You can experiment with these to get the best results for your photo. But I'm gonna start on medium and just pick the kid up and move him closer to his mom bring them down a little bit so the feet are kind of aligned, shadows are aligned, let go and let Photoshop do its magic, which is move the kid and get rid of the original kid. And again, kind of left some of that highlight left over. So now we're gonna use a different tool. We could use spot healing, but we're gonna use the patch tool because it's faster to make a selection of this stuff that got left behind. There we go, just draw around it, drag it to a spot where that doesn't exist let go and have it take care of it. So the patch tool is great for getting rid of things in a photo as well as uh, using content aware fill. So there you go, removing an object, number six, moving an object, number seven, what's number eight? Let's go ahead and close this. And for number eight, going back to mini bridge, we're going to work on two photos at the same time. So we're gonna select this one, Actually, we'll open this one first. Actually, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, let's open up this one first. We'll open up the background first, and we'll open up this one next, and we're gonna do the age-old thing that people always want to know how to do. 
how do I take a photo on one background and put it on a different one? So they're both open in these tabs here. And what I want to do is, of course, put the photo of the model on the photo of the background, the stock background from iStock. So I took this photo in the studio. This photo I downloaded from iStockPhoto.com. And now we're just going to go ahead and take our move tool and we're going to pick up this entire image. You're not moving it yet, but you're going to drag your mouse all the way up to the tab. Don't let go until you drag it all the way down into the image and then you can let go. Then you're going to get warnings potentially. Hey, these aren't the same resolution. Is that okay? Yes. Hey, these aren't the same color space. Is that okay? Yes. Bring it in. So Photoshop was just doing a good job of telling me that these two photos don't match from the standpoint of one was shot at 16 bit on a Nikon camera. The other one wasn't. One was in, you know, pro RGB. The other one was in sRGB or something else or Adobe RGB. So it's just letting me know all this technical things about why those two photos aren't the same. So now that's okay. We'll just go ahead now and use our zoom tool and we'll zoom in. And now you can see we're now working with two different photo layers. We have the background and we have layer um, one, which is the model. Now we can't move these around because the background always has to stay on the bottom. So I can't put the background on top, even if I wanted to. But um, the way we can get around that is this little lock, which is locking it in place. We can drag that little lock to the trash of the layers. And now I can pick this layer up and put that on top if that's what I want it to do, but it's not. So let's go to layer one, which contains our model. And in order for me to get rid of that background without too much work, I'm going to have to make a selection of the model. So to do that, we're going to do the same thing we did before. Quick select because it's fast, not because it's great, because it's quick. So we'll do a quick selection. Select her, select her arm, select the guitar, and the other arm, the other leg. Just trying to make sure we don't miss things here. The uh, neck of the guitar here. Let's make sure we get all those pieces. And sometimes Photoshop will do that. It will start selecting more. It says, oh, you want all this? I'll get all this too. And obviously we don't want all that. So notice that this tool has a plus sign in the middle of it. That means it's adding to the selection. When you want to subtract, you hold down your option or alt key. So option key on the Mac tells it to subtract that from the selection. Option key on the Mac tells it to subtract this part under the guitar from the selection. And if I let go, then I'm back to adding. So subtract this part under the arm, add this part uh, next to the chest there. Okay, so again, this tool is for quick selections, not accurate selections, so it's going to be horrible on things like hair. But that's okay. We got what we needed, which is the, the outline of the figure that we want. Now, the next thing we need to do is go up to this. My favorite button for this is called Refine Edge. When we click Refine Edge, that will show you the image on whatever background you last had it on. So Marching Ants, Red Overlay, On Black, On White, as a mask, on layers, or not, don't show me a selection. So obviously showing it on layers is kind of cool because you can actually see it on the background that you're compositing it to. So now if we zoom in, we can see what's going on here around the hair. We can see some of that white background in it. So we're gonna go ahead and go and do a couple things. We're gonna turn on Smart Radius and just boost our slider up just a little bit. And that teaches Photoshop to soften the edges that should be soft, keep the edges around the shoulders and areas that should be hard. Next, we're gonna to go to the Refine Edge or Refine Edge tool. And this tool is used to go where the background used to be, which is out here, and basically start painting and saying, nope, I don't want that color throughout this edge. And basically, it will start to remove that color from the edge. And that's the way this technique works. Now, of course, your mileage will vary based on your subject, what your subject's wearing, what kind of background they're on. 
And I know what people are saying right now. You're cheating. You doing this on a white background. That's so easy. Oh my God. If it, you know, if I only had white backgrounds, then it would be a piece of cake. Well, guess what? As a photographer, if I think I'm going to take something off a of background, I shoot it against something that's going to be easy to do. So it takes a little bit of planning sometimes in Photoshop to make life easier. That's not necessarily a, a cheating. That's just planning ahead. It's making my life easier accordingly. Now, once you get it the way you want, you can use Shift Edge to kind of remove some of that white there. We can also use contrast to kind of get more of that in there. We can decontaminate colors, which also removes some of the reflected color off of our subject. And then, um, you know, we can keep working, but I think you get the idea. When we click OK, that becomes our new layer. It turned off the old one, which you still have. And that becomes our new layer based on our... Um, based on our new selection, our new mask. So we can keep working on the mask. We wanted to tighten it up, make it better, but you get the idea. Now, one more trick to kind of make this look better. We're going to make an adjustment to it. So we can um, either add an adjustment layer or just simply go to image, adjust, and um, go to exposure once again. We're just gonna bring down exposure just a little bit because she's a little lighter than she would be if she were really in that dark, kind of, you know, stage background there. And also, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, uh, even her skin tone is not right for this kind of lighting because that's what happens if you shoot two different things and put them together. The lighting usually isn't the same. Now, this is going to be a little technical, but what I want to do is take a piece of this background that's the same shape as her, put it on top of her, and blend it in. So the first thing is I need to get a selection of the background that's exactly like her. And that's easy because now I've got this great mask. Uh, and if I didn't have the mask, as long as she was cut out on her own background, that would work as well. But let's, and by the way, this is what she looks like on her own, you know, with nothing behind her. So that is um, number eight, removing the background. <laughs> that's how you do it. But we're going to take it up a notch by putting it on a different background. Now, while I've got this mask, I'm going to hold down my Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows and click on it. That tells it to make a selection that's the same shape as everything we just cut out. Now we're going to go to the background and we're just going to do, we're going to make a copy of that background in the shape we just selected. So layer, on, let's say layer, we want layer we want new layer via copy i'm always doing command j so it took me a minute to find it new layer via copy makes a new layer that is just that it's just the background of her cutout now we're going to take that new layer and drag it all the way up to the top so it's on top of her and then we're going to take that layer and we can either blend it in but i kind of like the colors the way they are um i'm just going to simply go set the blending mode from normal to color and then lower the opacity to bring back her original color in a little bit more so that maybe around 20 percent this is before that's after just kind of toning her down into the same color as the background she is now on using this color that we cut cut out of the background, duplicate it and put it above her. So that would be our finished photo. Just wanted you to have the idea to do that. Now, you're, for those of you who said I cheated, for those of you who said, oh my God, that was so easy, it was on a white background, I've got one for you. Let's go back to Mini Bridge and let's go ahead and do this. Let's double click on this photo. And this is the background I wanna put her on. And this one is not so easy. This one is not as easy, at least, because in this photo, the problem is she has blonde hair against kind of a blonde wood. You know, it's going to be hard for Photoshop to figure that out. We've got the uh, hat and everything, too, with shadows on it. So not as easily, because this is stock photography. This one actually came from my stock, and it wasn't shot with the intention of putting it on a different background. But this is the background I want to put it on. So we're going to take this background, we're going to work the opposite way, just so you know how. Use our Move tool, drag it into the CoverGirl tab, CoverGirl tab, 
Drag it down into the image and let go. You're gonna get the warning about the color space, that's okay. And now we've got the background on top. This is, I did this on purpose, so you can learn how to size it. So we're gonna go up to our edit menu, free transform. That'll put handles around it. Hold down your shift key so that you can scale it proportionally and bring it up. Okay, great. Click OK, hit enter, click the little check mark, whatever you want. And now we've got the problem with what we want as the background, which should be on top. We can't drag it on top because the background's always on the back, back bottom. <laughs> but if you double click on it, that'll turn it into a layer. Or if you drag the lock to the trash, that will turn it into a layer. And now you can rearrange the order. Okay, great. So now we've got our cowgirl selected on top and we do the same thing. But this is not gonna be as easy. So let's go ahead and do our selection. Quick select, quickly select. That's why we use quick select, cause it's quick. There we go. Not because it's accurate. If you really wanted to be accurate, you'd use something like the pen tool and trace your way around the image. But so, so many times I'm gonna use refined edge, I really just don't need the pen tool accuracy for this kind of stuff. Now we're gonna go ahead and make that smaller. Get this little part under the arm there. And I think I got everything. I got the hand. Yep, got all that. Got the shoulder, got the hair, got the hat. Got all pieces of the hat, even that little piece up there. That little piece there. Okay, we got it all. So same thing, refine edge. When we do refine edge, that shows us what we've got so far. Again, we can put this on anything we want. We can see it on the mask. We can see it on black and white, black or white, I should say. Overlay, marching ants, whatever you want. Now, uh, I'm gonna keep it on white just for a moment here. We're gonna see, again, smart radius. to Kind of soften up that selection where it needs to be soft. Make it keep it hard around the hat where it needs to be hard. And again, if we go too far, we'll start bringing in garbage. So we don't wanna to go too far with that. All right, next, we're going to use the Refine Radius tool to kind of get rid of some of that background color around the edges here and bring back in some of the hair. So we just start kind of getting that out. And you're saying, well, wait, that's not really doing a good job. Well, you're right, because you're working on a background of wood and that's not, that's not easy to do. You wanted something that wasn't easy, this is something that's not easy. But anyway, I can keep going, keep going, kind of trying to bring back in the hair and then I can tweak what I've done with the sliders. So we can say shift edge, kind of turn that down, tone that down a little bit. And again, you go too far, you'll start cutting the hair off. We can also use contrast to bring that back in as well. So we're trying to get the little stray areas of hair without having too much of a shade on it. All right, once we're happy with it, again, decontaminate colors, kind of turn off some of the color that might've been reflected onto her. That will also automatically put it on a mask for us. Again, you can play around with the shift edge until you're happy. But if we look at this against what it's going to be on or anything else, you really won't notice it as much. That's the point, is that while you would see it on nothing, you wouldn't see it as much on a background like we have it here. So once again, we'll click out of this, we'll click OK. That becomes our new image. Once again, we will tone down that layer, image, adjust. Uh, we can use exposure, we can use levels. Let's try levels this time. In levels, we have uh, shadows, midtones, highlights. We're going to go ahead and adjust the midtones just down just a bit. Because again, she was very bright against that not so bright background. And next, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the same technique. So hold down the command key, click on that layer, make that selection uh, or layer mask, make that selection of her, go to the background and new layer via copy or command J on the keyboard Mac, control J on the keyboard Windows. That will make a layer of her shape out of the background. We're gonna take that layer and move it to the top. Now we're gonna average those colors, the things we didn't do on the other one. We're gonna say filter, blur, 
Average. Average the colors of the blue, the orange, the brown, the beige. Average it out. That's what it should average out to. Now we set the blending mode to color. There we go. And we lower the opacity till it looks the way you want it to look. So just a hint of that color around her on her. And again, that's our effect. So last but not least, two more things. Let's jump back over to the uh, concert image we worked on. Let's add some type to it. So let's go ahead and click on our text tool. This will be number nine. Click our text tool and we're just gonna type rock star. Okay, so we, I typed it a little high, so we click the little check mark there. And we can move this around because type is automatically always on its own layer. So we can move that down. We can go ahead and grab, go back to our type tool and make any corrections, like I didn't capitalize the O there. We can also change the font to whatever we want. So let's see what I've got here. Do I have, um, we grab this little A, a byte font there. We can also adjust the size. So right now it's 168 points. I don't think we need it that big, but we probably do want it bigger than 72. So let's go ahead and now you can type in numbers, but there's a little shortcut here. If you drag the T's to the left or right, that's kind of like a little hidden controller to make the type bigger or smaller. Last but not least, we don't want the type to be white. We can click the white and make it whatever color we want or mix, but we can also, if you drag onto the image or just move onto the image, you can make it whatever color from the image you want. So I actually like the color of her leg. We'll use that as our rock star type. So adding type to a photo will make it stand out a little bit more by adding an effect to it like drop shadow. We're on that layer, so drop shadow applies to that layer. We can pick the shadow up, move it around, Click OK. We've got our type. And again, that's just a layer. You can turn it on and off, move it around with the Move tool, put it wherever you want it to be because it's above the image. And whatever you do to it, it will only happen to that particular layer. All right, last thing we're going to do is save. Let's go up to our File menu and choose Save. Now, when we choose Save or Save As, it will automatically default this to a Photoshop file because you're making a file that has layers in it. And you're going to want to be able to always come back and edit these layers. And the file format that contains those layers is .psd. That's what we want, so we'll click Save. Now that will make a Photoshop layered file that we can always open back up, turn layers on and off, delete layers, adjust layers, adjust the mask, do whatever we want to do. But if I wanted to put this on Facebook, send it to a friend, email it, put it on my website, any of those things, then this format's not going to work. So last thing, file, save for web. When we choose save for web, that will bring up the save for web dialog box where you can give it a better size because it's too big. So you can bring it down to whatever size your website says it has to be at least smaller than. 1024 is a good web size. You can make it even smaller. So let's say, for example, you wanted to make it um, 800 is the highest uh, or the longest dimension. And that will automatically size it width and height accordingly. You can choose the quality. You can choose the format, JPEG, GIF, PNG, so forth and so on. JPEG is the most common format for images. And that's going to bring the file size all the way down to 78.41K. So we're going to go ahead and click Save. It's going to ask us where we can call it whatever we want. So we can say Rockstar um, web image. So that's the one that's going to go on our web site or Facebook or whatever. And away we go. So I hope you learned something. Uh, I know that was rapid fire, 10 things in Photoshop for the beginner. But you know what? Those are the 10 things people always ask me how to do. So I've covered them. Now, if you miss something, you need to learn more, there are all these resources out there, including my podcast and Adobe TV and more and more and more and more and more. But for now, you've got this video. You can always go back, watch it again, see which things you need to do over and over again until you get it better. Thanks again for watching. My name is Terry White. We'll catch you next time.